Welcome to this tutorial on nebulizers and inhalation medication provided in collaboration by the AB and DME Medicare Administrative Contractors. For our agenda today, we will review coverage criteria, documentation requirements, and resources. Let's begin with the coverage criteria. First, it's important to note that this is a diagnosis-driven policy. The Nebulizer Local Coverage Determination, or LCD, requires the beneficiary to have a qualifying condition and a valid drug prescription before a nebulizer can be considered reasonable and necessary. If the inhalation medication used with the nebulizer is not covered, the nebulizer, compressor, and related accessories will be denied as not reasonable and necessary. Diagnosis is the key and the LCD provides detailed information about diagnosis codes that will allow for coverage of specified medication and related nebulizer. The table on this slide represents specific inhalation solutions and the corresponding diagnosis codes that support the medical necessity for each to be used with a small volume nebulizer. Note that a variety of drugs qualify for use with certain diagnoses, while in other cases, only one drug may be available to qualify under a specific diagnosis. For example, a diagnosis of obstructive pulmonary disease has eight drugs that would qualify for payment of the nebulizer, cystic fibrosis has two, and bronchiectasis only has one. A large volume nebulizer and compressor, including supplies, may be covered when utilized to administer acetylcysteine for persistent thick and tenacious pulmonary secretions due to cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, tracheostomy, or a tracheobronchial stent. A filtered nebulizer and compressor may be covered for HIV, pneumocystosis, and complications of organ transplant when pentamidine is prescribed to treat those conditions. A small volume ultrasonic nebulizer may be covered if the beneficiary is diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension and requires administration of troprostanol. The additional criteria listed in the local coverage determination must be met, otherwise claims for the nebulizer will be denied as not reasonable and necessary. Eloprost requires the same additional criteria for coverage of the controlled dose delivery system for beneficiaries diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension. As noted on the previous slides, if the beneficiary has a diagnosis of pulmonary artery hypertension, it can be primary or secondary to connective tissue disease, thromboembolic disease, HIV infection, cirrhosis, diet drugs, or congenital left-right shunts. A qualifying pulmonary hypertension diagnosis cannot be secondary to pulmonary venous hypertension or disorders of the respiratory system per the coverage criteria. If the diagnosis meets the outlined criteria, then additional requirements must be met to complete coverage. Note that all are required. The pulmonary hypertension has progressed despite maximal medical and or surgical treatment of the identified condition and the mean pulmonary artery pressure is greater than 25 millimeters of mercury at rest or greater than 30 millimeters of mercury with exertion, and the beneficiary has significant symptoms from the pulmonary hypertension, for example, severe dyspnea on exertion, and either fatigability, angina, or syncope. And treatment with oral cancer channel blocking agents has been tried and failed or has been considered and ruled out. If the patient has a qualifying diagnosis and meets these additional requirements, then triprostanol and eloprost, as well as the related nebulizer and accessories, may be covered per the LCD. A small volume ultrasonic nebulizer and related accessories are reasonable and necessary to administer triprostanol inhalation solution only. Claims for code E0574 ultrasonic or electronic aerosol generator with small volume nebulizer used with other inhalation solutions will be denied as not reasonable and necessary. A controlled dose inhalation drug delivery system is covered when it is reasonable and necessary to deliver eloprost to beneficiaries with pulmonary hypertension only. Claims for code K0730 
controlled dose inhalation drug delivery system for use with other inhalation solutions will be denied as not reasonable and necessary. Remember that the K0730 is now a capped rental item. A large volume ultrasonic nebulizer offers no proven clinical advantage over a pneumatic compressor. This nebulizer will be denied as not reasonable and necessary in all cases. Accessories used with a nebulizer are separately payable. This table, which is also found in the LCD, shows the compressor or generator and the corresponding accessories that may be billed to Medicare. Each accessory has an established, expected frequency need for replacement. The table on this slide displays accessories and the usual or typical maximum allowable per month. Quantities provided above the maximum amount shown on this table will be primarily denied, but may be appealed with clinical documentation showing the medical necessity of the additional items. This chart represents inhalation drugs and solutions with the maximum monthly allowable. Again, anything billed at a higher dosage will require an appeal with supporting clinical justification for quantities in excess of the expected amounts in order to receive reimbursement. Medicare does have allowance for some rescue dosing. Rescue dosing is an amount in addition to what the usual maximum would be for albuterol, albuterol ipratropium combination, levalbuterol, and metaproterenol for beneficiaries who take either formoterol or arfamoterol. Finally, here are some instances of non-coverage under this policy. Large volume pneumatic nebulizer and water or saline when used with oxygen equipment, pre-filled disposable large volume nebulizers, albuterol, levalbuterol, and metaproterenol used together, formoterol and arformoterol used together, and albuterol, levalbuterol, and ipratropium cannot be covered in addition to the albuterol-ipratropium combination. In this next section, we will review documentation requirements. Medical record documentation is an extremely important part of Medicare coverage. It makes the determination for whether the Medicare coverage criteria has been met. Medical records may come from any source where healthcare professionals have provided care without a financial motive. Supplier produced records cannot be used to support medical necessity. Here are three important reminders about medical records. Supplier produced records, even if signed by the ordering physician, are not considered part of the medical record. This includes attestation letters and letters of medical necessity. Templates and forms, including CMS Certificates of Medical Necessity, CMNs, are subject to corroboration with information found in the beneficiary's medical record that Medicare has on file. Information contained directly in the contemporaneous medical record is the source required to justify payment, except as noted elsewhere for prescriptions and CMNs. The standard written order, SWO, must be obtained by the supplier prior to submitting a claim for all initial orders and must include the elements on this slide. The beneficiary's name or Medicare Beneficiary Identifier, MBI, the order date, a general description of the item, the quantity to be dispensed if that applies, the treating practitioner name or National Provider Identifier, NPI, and the treating practitioner's signature. Additionally, note that signature and date stamps are not allowed. Suppliers must obtain a new SWO when any of the following changes occur. A change in supplier, a change in the item provided, the frequency or dosage changes, the amount prescribed changes, when length of need expires, and if the specific state law requires it. For all demipost items, the initial medical need or justification is established at the time the item is first ordered. Therefore, beneficiary medical records demonstrating that the item is reasonable and necessary are formed prior to the creation of the initial order. For purchased items like medication, information justifying reimbursement will come from this initial time period. Additionally, Medicare requires that ongoing medical need be documented for continued therapy. 
timely medical records to support continued need must be dated within 12 months of any date of service billed to Medicare. As a DME MAC, we received numerous questions on what to do during the pandemic. We'll answer a few of those questions in the next few slides. Clinical indications found in the nebulizer policy will not be enforced beginning March 1, 2020 for the duration of the COVID-19 public health emergency, PHE. When the PHE ends, additional guidance will be provided. For the duration of the PHE, treating practitioners and suppliers still have obligations to provide an SWO for all items, ensure the items are reasonable and necessary, and document the medical need for all items prescribed. This documentation must be available upon request. Finally, we have resources for all four DME MAC jurisdictions that will be beneficial to both suppliers and practitioners prescribing nebulizers and inhalation medication for Medicare beneficiaries. Meridian Healthcare Solutions is the contractor for Jurisdiction A, the Northeastern states, and listed here are Noridian's website, contact center, Noridian Medicare portal, LCDs, and policy articles. CGS Administrators LLC is the contractor for Jurisdiction B, North Central and Mid-Atlantic states. Listed here are their resources. CGS Administrators LLC is also the contractor for Jurisdiction C, Southwestern states, and listed here are their resources. Noridian Healthcare Solutions is also the contractor for Jurisdiction D, Mid to West Coast states, including Alaska and Hawaii. Listed here are their resources. Periodically, there's a need to reference to some other contractors as well. These are the most common resources. They include the Pricing, Data Analysis, and Coding Contractor, PDAC, National Supplier Clearinghouse, NSC, and Common Electronic Data Interchange, CEDI. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our tutorial. Continue your learning experience by referring to additional recordings available on this YouTube channel.